Introducing Video Assist. Use your iPad as an external monitor and recording device with compatible USB capture cards. This will allow you to easily record videos or capture frame grabs from any HDMI video source. SDI video sources are supported too with certain capture cards. This opens the door to use your iPad as a director's monitor, an onboard camera monitor, a second display for a computer, or you can connect it to any one of these gaming consoles, a PS5, a Steam Deck, or a Switch. Today I'm going to give you a quick demo. Let's get started by opening Video Assist. This is our user interface here, and the first thing you're likely going to want to do is connect a USB capture card. I've got one set up here taking a feed from a Teradek, so I'll plug it in. The first time that you insert a USB capture card, the system's going to ask you if for camera access, and it's also going to ask you for microphone access. This allows the app to access your video inputs and your audio inputs. In the video input menu, you see a list of different video sources, your current resolution and your current frame rate. So this shows you all the video resolutions that are compatible with your USB capture card. And this shows you all of the frame rates that are compatible. Currently, my video source is 60 frames, so I'm just going to match that so everything's in sync. Once you're in, you can start using it straight away. Hit record and you'll start recording what you see on the video image. I can hit stop and I'll just record a couple of times. While I'm recording this clip, I can also take a frame grab just by pressing this button. And if I'm not recording, I can also take a frame grab just by pressing that button. If I want to play back my last clip, I just hit play. While I'm in playback, I can hit pause. I can scrub to a certain section in the timeline. I can take a frame grab if I like. I can use these just to toggle frame by frame. And I can continue playback. I hit stop to go live. To view all of the clips that I've recorded, I use this to access the playback list. I can see the two clips that I recorded and just by tapping them, you're in and they instantly play back. And if I tapped the other one, it would queue up the other clip. Also from this playback menu, you can access frame grabs that you have captured. So over here's a few frame grabs that we just captured before. So you can tap to open that up in a full screen viewer and zoom around and get a closer look. You can either close to go out or you can swipe down to go out. Now back in this main menu, another cool thing worth noting is that there's a full screen mode. So if I tap here, I can go full screen and I get a full screen display of what we're seeing. I can tap for the overlay and I can press lock. And then this means if someone tries to touch the screen, it's just gonna jiggle and they won't be able to input or change any settings. You can tap the lock to unlock and you can also show a toolbar in this full screen mode. This is a minimal toolbar which allows you just to record and you can get a basic recording interface down there. You can hit stop and then you can access your playback from here just as quick, nice, simple navigation. And you can also use this as a scrub and you've got your frame controls there. To get out of full screen you just tap and hit close. Whether you're in live or whether you're in playback, you can access this full suite of video assist tools. So if you tap and hold on here, you'll open your options. This first video effect is color, so it allows us to apply some basic color correction to the shot. What I can now do is use just a single tap just to toggle this off and on. So you can kind of go in, set up a look that you kind of like as a little modification, and then you can view your ungraded look and then a little preview of your graded look if you so desire. You can also do the same thing for our transform effects. So this allows you to do things like flip and flop. You can do 90 degree rotations. You can scale in and then move the shot around if you need to do a little digital zoom reframe. And all of this works with just a off on once you've kind of lined up a preset. You can apply a grid. So turning a grid on will give you the basic grid, but you can also increase the amount that you've got. You can change the grid layout to be just horizontal, just vertical, none or both. You can apply center marks to the middle 
You can change your opacity of the lines. You can also change the thickness of your lines and you can change to a variety of different colors. Again, this can be toggled off and on. And then lastly, you've got your mask effect, which allows you to select from a range of different aspect ratios. You can scale them down. And you can see there you've got a 240 mask and you can tap it off and on. And some of your customization options here will allow you to change the opacity of the shading. You can change the opacity of your line. You can change the thickness of your line and again, your line color. You can also use this mask overlay to use both, which will shade and give you a frame line. But if you select just frame lines, it'll show you just the frame line, or you can select just shaded, or you can select back to both. And then all of these effects stack as well. So you can basically do all sorts of zooming, color correction, all in tandem. The only other feature that is worth noting in this quick little demo is if you pop up to settings here, you can change your recording codec file extension, but the key player that's probably worth noting is we've built a record trigger function. So you can select your camera type. Currently we support ARRI cameras and Sony Venice. And then you can enable a record trigger. When record trigger is enabled, it will detect that you've got record in your status info using computer vision and it'll automatically start rolling a clip. When I go to standby, it cuts. And that's a demo of Video Assist. Please let me know what you think. I hope you find it quite interesting. Thanks.